Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Doohen Sunstrip. And you might recognize this because I did videos in the past for Street Legal Racing Redline, and this is one of the cars from that game. So we have six options here, but there's really only three different versions to choose from. You have the stock versions, the beater versions, and then the race all wheel drive versions. Now you have two of each, and that's because they're different body styles. So we're going to go ahead and spawn up one of each so you can actually see the difference. Now you can kind of see the difference in the thumbnails, but when you spawn them up, it's much more clear. So this is the normal version, which is basically a coupe version of the vehicle. And then we have this one, which is the hatchback model. So let's go ahead and drive this around a bit so you can see how it performs. Now this is not a fast car. Zero to 60 takes about 10 seconds. And I say about because I fell asleep halfway through it. And then I woke up and then it reached 60 miles per hour. So I estimated it to be about 10 seconds. With that small incline right there, it's probably more like 11 or 12 seconds. Now I'm complaining a lot because this car looks, you know, pretty sporty. It doesn't just look like regular economy car. It looks like sporty version of economy car, but it's pretty slow. Although the handling is decent. It doesn't handle like an economy car. It actually has pretty good churn in, but it's very much a momentum based car where you got to maintain as much momentum as possible through the corners. You don't want to be really harsh on the brakes or the steering. You got to be nice and gentle, kind of like this. So you don't lose a lot of speed because when you lose speed, it's hard to get it back. You know, this downhill section, we might be able to reach 100 miles per hour, right? Almost. Nope. But we did get a nice crash directly into the trees. And I could have avoided the trees, but that would have meant slowing down, which I had no plans of doing when it was that close to 100 miles per hour. So taking a look at the damage here, it held up really well, maybe even a bit too well for that high speed of a crash. And I think it might be fun to do the exact same crash with the other version of the car. So we're just going to go ahead and follow the path and then crash into those same trees a little bit farther away, though, so they don't crash into each other. Although... You know, I could crash them into each other, sure, but that's not the goal. The goal is to do the same crash twice and compare the damage. Which means I have to drive good two times in a row because I didn't crash until that last section. I had lots of speed going into it. So like right here, nice and gentle with the steering, nothing too much. Beautiful. That's exactly how you want to do it to go as fast as possible. At least exit the corner as fast as possible with this car because I'm flooring it. And we're just inching our way closer to 100 miles per hour. Right here is just a little, little bit too much, but close enough. All right, there we go. Now the trees are coming up. They want to hit the same spot, lay a little bit of avoidance, and there we go. So it looks like actually this one fared worse than the other one. Kind of interesting, because you see the dash on this one's really being pushed into the car. And if we pop over to this one, it's not so much. Like this one seems like it's just a lot more structurally sound, which I did not expect. I forget they'd be pretty close to similar, but nah. If you want a safety, you get this one. If you don't care and you want to look cool, although I think this one might look actually cooler, you get this one. And for most of the video, we're probably going to be using this version because I used this car a lot in Street Legal Racing Airline when I was younger. Because when I was younger, I would suck at driving and I would pick this car because it was one of the cheap starter cars. I would drive for a while and eventually crash it, run out of money and have to restart. And then I'd pick another one up and repeat forever because I never got very far in the game because I would always wreck my cars and get arrested by the police and all that. So let's just go ahead and drive this thing around the city for a little bit, see how well it does around these corners. That was a terribly slow corner, but it was pretty cool and dramatic looking, so kind of a trade-off right there. All right, here is a next real corner. We're going to make this one a little dramatic again. Oh, nice and easy, actually. I thought the car would get a little bit of a slide right there, but it stayed very well planted. All right, so we're through the city on the sidewalk, almost crashing into the bushes. That was scary. I mean, the nice thing about this car is you don't have to slow down very often on this map. Like, a lot of time, you just kind of have to tap the brakes just a little bit, and you'll be fine. Like, right here, just a little tap, and then floor it again. Yeah, no problems. Wasn't even a concern about falling off the road or crashing in the trees or whatever. Just cruising along, flooring it, barely getting past 70 miles per hour. Just lost the hubcap, though. And my car is basically ruined at this point, so into the rocks. I mean, once your hubcap falls off, you know you gotta go trade it in because the car is ruined. So the damage on this one looks... A lot less than last time, even though it was only about a 30 mile per hour difference between the two collisions. That's interesting. And uh, yeah, this car is completely dead after that impact, unfortunately. So let's get a new car and then drive in the same direction one last time before we change things up because there's one thing I want to hit. That means instead of going into the city, we're going to go straight ahead and we're going to go towards the other crashed sun strip. But this time, we're not going to get that far. We're only going to get about a third of the way because we are going to be hitting the bridge. We're going to just pop up on it like that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Car is a little bit on, well, a lot on fire. I was going to say a little bit. No, that's a lot on fire. And now it's falling off the side of the bridge, tumbling to the water. At least it'll put itself out, maybe. Nope. It is stuck right 
here. It's not going to put itself out. It's just going to stay on fire forever. Or until I decide, let's reset it. So now we're going to change to the beater version. Because whenever I played Street Legal Racing Redline, my car never looked like this one. It looked like this one. I would start with an okay car, and then I would wreck it out of an engine that's damaged. And I have to sell off parts of the vehicle to try to repair the engine, but I still wouldn't have enough to repair it. So I would drive around with my damaged engine and lose to everybody. So this one has no lights, no roof, no passenger seat, the blown engine, and blown suspension. And then it has different wheels, like you sold the fancy wheels, and now you just have these really cheap steelies on it. And you can see the suspension's blown because of just how much it moves around when you go like left and right. You see the car just bouncing all over the place. And you can see the engine's blown because it's smoking all over the place. And 0 to 60 takes about a half hour or 12 seconds if you want to take it literally, not uh, figuratively. But you see, it's even slower. Like before, we would be up to 80 miles per hour right here. Now we're, we're basically sitting at 70. We're not accelerating much. Like, we're accelerating here because it's downhill only, I'm pretty sure. Once we get to level area, and not much acceleration happening. So let's just go ahead and hello trees. Nice spinning crash into those. And we got two broken wheel, wheel axles, so we're not gonna be able to move at all. So we can go ahead and reset this and maybe we'll switch it for the other beater just so you can see what that one looks like. And again, this is pretty much the same thing as the other one, but it has the hatchback body style. So let's try to drive this thing around seriously, even with the blown suspension and blown engine. Cause I wanna see how badly the suspension actually works when it's blown. Cause I never really did any testing with that ever. So we're going to try to slow down a little bit and then go around this corner aggressively. Oh, that feels bad. Like it just feels unresponsive to the inputs because it kind of has to like the weight loads up on the vehicle whenever you do anything onto the corner of the suspension. It's, oh, it feels awful. It feels so awful when you actually look at it and focus on the steering. It's like you got to slow down way more and you got to come to the corners way sooner than you would expect. You kind of have to like really steer in with it and oh, you see the car tumbling it doesn't like look like it's just cruising on the road just kind of bubbling and bouncing all over the place i don't know how to describe it this does not look right like right there it's just bump 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 now flooring it man but we can't even go 60 miles per hour we're losing speed because of the hill oh it's so sad all right come on corner 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 <laughs> it does not corner anymore like i was saying before oh yeah it has pretty good steering and stuff no not anymore this thing has bad steering so bad, in fact, I don't even care if I crash it. No, wait, I never care if I crash it, but oh, oh, I'm not gonna be able to save that. You know, I probably could have saved that if I had the regular suspension, but you saw, once it got bounced that first time, it kept bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and uh, next thing you know, the main engine was broken, even with uh, pretty minimal damage. I wonder if the engine is more fragile when it's blown, because that would make sense. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the last duo of sun strips. These are the all-wheel drive racing versions, which actually have a lot of visual differences compared to the normal ones. So just from the rear, wide bumper racing wing then it has wide fenders on both the front and rear wheels it has a side skirt that kind of blends in the side as well bigger front bumper slightly different hood and then if we go under the car it has a skid plate which is that piece of metal right there which helps protect the car if you were to bottom out and then if you go to the inside it has a roll cage that actually blends in really really well with the rest of the car when i first looked at this i didn't even realize it had a roll cage because of how well it blends in and actually there's probably going to be you only look at the interior because there is not much to say about it. It is a very basic, but it does at least have functional gauges and a functional steering wheel. But, you know, if you look around here, yeah, it's low resolution. So out of there and go to the normal camera. So in addition to that, though, it also has the performance upgrades you'd want. It has a stage two turbocharger, all wheel drive, as the title said, and limited slip differentials front and rear, a racing suspension setup and bigger wheels. What does that mean? It means it can crash like that and keep on driving. I was actually trying to total it right there, but somehow it wanted to keep going, so I'll uh, let it go. And it's definitely driving a bit slow right now, but it still feels faster than the normal version. All right, let's finish it off. We're going to pop it off the bridge. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And upright. Yes, it is. Now you can take a look at the damaged body, and it seems like it works just as well as the normal one. I like the way the trunk is just kind of flapping about. It's like it's waving at me like, hey, YBR, why'd you do this? It's because like, I wreck cars. It's what I do. I will go the opposite direction real quickly and uh, see if we can get some actual driving going instead of just crashing it immediately. So up to 100 miles per hour probably on this straightaway, no problem. The other cars were struggling for 100 miles per hour, this one's got it. We're up to 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100! We got 100. I knew it would, I knew it would happen with this car. I believed in it. And it's still moving. 115, 100, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. There's the death of the car. Whoa, wait. 
Wait, wait, wait. I can still kind of move. I have zero steering input, but we can accelerate and put ourselves in a ditch. So that really didn't go too well. I don't know how that engine is still delivering power at all. It's basically been completely removed from the engine bay. So we'll do one more run around here, and then we're going to take this to a track, because this is a race car. It belongs on a racetrack. What racetrack are we going to go to? We're going to go to the racetrack I always use, which is Orochi Raceway. And for some reason, I've said racetrack so many times that racetrack doesn't even feel like a real word anymore. It's just like it just feels like a, a made up word now. I don't know why. So we're just going to kind of cruise through the town. And then after we get out of the town, we should be able to really get this thing up to speed and have some fun with it through some actual corners. So just blast through here, 100 miles per hour through the town, disrespecting every single citizen here by blaring my noisy little engine. I mean, actually, this thing is fast. Like, I got to admit that it's fast. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, so the automatic transmission just decided to money shift itself right there. It went from like, it should be in third gear, but decided to go into first because second gear shifts at about 60 miles per hour. And it shifted down into first at 60 miles per hour. That would blow up an engine in real life, I'm almost certain. And it completely upset the balance of the vehicle, and that's why I spun out right there. It did it again! Why are you doing this car? Alright, when we're on the racetrack, I'm using a manual transmission because apparently this thing does not know how to shift. You hit the brakes and then you accelerate again and it just says, Time for first gear! Like right there, I was too I was too scared to try to slow down because of that. Let's see how badly this will actually happen. Let's get it really high speed and then we're going to just try to make it really over rev the engine. Although I do need a straightaway for this, or at least a semi-straight part of road. This is not that. This is actually a very curvy section. Alright, I might be able to get something going right here. It looks like it straightens out just a bit. Alright, so we're going to break and then... I didn't do anything there. It actually worked... Actually worked okay there. Okay! You know, when you want to mess it up, it doesn't mess up. But when you're just cruising along and you expect it to work, that's when it messes up. Got it. Maybe I wasn't hitting the brakes hard enough. We got mashed those brakes and then... Nope! I mean, it really did rev a little high right there, but it wasn't as bad as before. Brakes and then... There we go, there we go, and upsetting the balance, crashing into the pole. Alright, now we're going to move over to Hirochi Raceway. Just going to scroll down to it. For some reason, that scroll doesn't pick up half the time. And we're going to go to the starting line. And for this test, we're going to be using the hatchback version, because I used the coupe version at East Coast USA. And performance-wise, they should be identical. The only difference is the body style. Even the wide body kit's the same, so the fenders, the bumper, all the same. Maybe performance wise this one might be slightly different because it doesn't have the wing and it has a little bit more weight to it because of the hatchback body style. Although I'm not sure about that. I never actually compared it, but they feel identical when you drive them. So how does it actually feel to drive? It feels very, very planted and a little bit understeery. Like you see right there, it just didn't want to turn in as tight as I wanted to. So the easy way to fix that is just when you're coming into the corner, just tap the e-brake a little bit and it'll steer in nice and hard and that's more of like how I like it to steer in. So just, you know, e-brake is very useful. And it's not a lot. You just tap, tap, tap. And there you go. There's your turn in. Tap, tap, tap. And there's your out. Nice and easy. And actually, I only tapped that one twice. I said tap, tap, tap. It was more tap, tap. So tap, tap. And... Woo! That was close. I thought I was a goner for a second. It just pulled through for me, though. All right, again, slow it down. Tap. And it's fun to drive it like this. I, I will say, when you actually just tap the e-brake around every corner, that's fun driving. It's not fast. It's not fast. It's not too fancy, but it is fun. Although somehow I just ruptured my fuel tank by uh, tapping the thing. So I got to go into the uh, pits. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I uh, tried to go into the pits, and before I knew it, I was on fire, and it was too late. If I, if I realized my fuel tank ruptured sooner, I would have been able to line up for the pits. Somebody repair me! Oh, there goes my front bumper. I just flung it away. So let's go ahead and finish this up by going to Brutal Slope and Leap of Death and destroying this thing. And I think that'll be it for this video. We'll start off with Leap of Death and then we'll make our way to Brutal Slope. And for the crashing, we're going to be using the race version because it's the wide body kit, which I think will be more interesting to see it crash. And we'll actually change up the color a bit right here. How about we go with a cream race car? Always the best color for race cars, isn't it? And apparently the game says no this car is in black and to that I say no I wanted cream so we're gonna pull up this menu and say give me cream or give me death and thankfully I got cream and not death although this will blend in a lot with the dirt won't it and I saw right there when we bottomed out 
that bumper really went expansion mode. That was interesting. All right, so we'll do a run at full speed. If it looks interesting enough, we'll also do it in slow-mo. So here we go. Flat car. And is the engine still in there? It looks like it. It's hard to tell because of the way it's rolling. Pause it right here. Yep, the engine is there, but it is falling out the front. I'm surprised it isn't working still like the other time. And this is going to be one of those two impact runs. That's it. You don't see those very often. Just complete destruction in two hits. All right, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this again in slow-mo. I want to slow-mo entering the ramp. It sounds really dumb, but I want to see that rear bumper really flexing right here. So here we go. Flex bumper, flex. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I like that so much. Like, it doesn't fall off, but it looks like it's so close to falling off, which makes it so cool to watch. Anyway, so we'll do a little bit of slow-mo when we get to the impact zone as well. It's going to be pretty much identical to the last crash, I would think, because I just wanted to make sure I saw that bumper flex. So here we go, 16 times slow-mo. And you see right there, that roll cage really held the structure of the vehicle up. That was a much more gentle crash than last time, too. It kind of more rode on the wall versus crashing into the ground. And if we can make it to the water, this will be one of the least destroyed cars I've ever had from Leap of Death. Is it going to make it? Oh, it's not going to make it just barely. It's going to scrape a lot. Oh, but not really bad. I figured it was going to smash into that, but it actually kind of just went through it nice and easy. And that thing held up spe spectacularly because of the way it landed. Awesome. All right, let's finish this up by proving that it can actually be destroyed by going to Brutal Slope and actually destroying it. And for these tests, we will once again be using the race version because the extra roll cage does help the structural strength of the vehicle. So these ones will be using the regular coupe version, I think. Have no reason to choose one or the other. We're going to leave that truck going as I drive off. <laughs> I hit the wrong button, but it works out. Maybe as this thing drives down the hill, we can watch this truck uh, wreck itself. I don't know what you think will get there first, the truck or the car. How's the car going? It's actually doing okay on its own. Maybe line it up a little bit left. Perfect. How's the truck going? It's also doing great on its own. This is awesome. All right, it looks like the truck is going to be the winner, though. And we get to see the truck go boop. And then we get to see the sun strip go bang. All right, eight times slow-mo, 16 times slow-mo, 100 times slow-mo. Big impact, complete destruction. Bye-bye, car. It was nice knowing you. And I don't think it's any different if you use the coupe or the hatch there. They both get crushed. We'll do one more run this time. Instead of crushing it like that, though, we'll do it in a different area. So slow, fast, fast, fast. That was good. Had a little bit of air time, remained in control though. So I wanna do this one is I wanna do the squisher, which is something I don't use too often, but I don't know. It just sounds like it'd be fun for this car for some reason. Let's go ahead and clutch in so you don't have to listen to the engine over revving itself and being obnoxious. Obnoxious, I kind of said that word weird. So here we go, we're gonna just kinda of slide into here and oh, well, okay. <laughs> You know what? That's just as good. Oh, that looks so brutal right there. Wow, that's... Ha! Alright, that's a good spot to end this. So until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. And wow, look at all those parts that fall fell off. This is why I used the race version, because there's all these extra parts to just cover everything in debris. Anyways, like I said, YBR, I'll see ya.